Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, today we'll tell you uh, some stories about uh, femtocell hacking. Uh, my name is Alexander Zaitsev and this is Alexey Osipov. Uh, basically for now we are totally unemployed researchers and penetration testers. Uh, also we love Club Mate a bit. Uh, so I think we'll be up uh, it uh, today the following way. I'll try to uh, cover some engineering parts of our research, how it went, uh, and then uh, the second part, Alexey will tell you about uh, kind of business impact of things we discovered. Uh, so let's start. Uh, some time ago, during our uh, small project, we uh, totally needed to uh, create our own UMTS network. Uh, and uh, as you all may know, uh, there is an open source project, Asmocom BB. Uh, but it's, uh, no matter how uh, awesome it is, it's uh, 2G only. And so it couldn't help uh, our goal anyhow. So we started to, uh, walk to uh, look towards uh, kind of cheap uh, uh, family cells as a platform to build on. And apparently, I uh, found why the Huawei uh, UAP uh, 2105, uh, it's uh, sold, uh, still sold on a uh, number of Chinese uh, sites, uh, no matter that it's officially discontinued. Uh, since we're unboxing, uh, we had some promising feelings about what <laughs> awaits us. Though, uh, turns out that the path to our goal wasn't as simple as uh, we uh, wanted to be, and actually it's still away. Uh, so, uh, we tried to uh, look into it uh, kind of deeper, uh, and uh, found out after looking uh, for the publicly available interface, uh, we found only a web interface, HTTP one. Uh, we assembled it and uh, found out that the board consisted of two boards. Uh, one, uh, the main board and the radio board. Mm, so uh, one thing attracted our attention. Uh, it was a 26 pin uh, header sticking out of the main board and we thought we could uh, get some interesting stuff up there. Why no, 26 pins uh, could be a lot of fun. Uh, some debug interfaces, especially when it says kind of debug near it. Uh, so to keep things uh, cheap and simple, we took our Arduino Due because uh, it's 3.3 uh, volts, so we uh, don't fry anything, and uh, started to poke uh, all the pins, uh, sending data to one of them and receiving another, trying to uh, find some correlations, and uh, eventually we found uh, a dependency. Uh, our observation showed uh, that uh, one, uh, uh, two of the pins uh, consequently uh, responded. Uh, we uh, eventually found out that this is a uh, uh, URPNs, TX and RX. So uh, this was kind of easy. Uh, we discovered that uh, there is a VXWorks there by connecting with our serial adapter. Uh, VXWorks has attracted uh, quite a bit of attention uh, in recent years in the security community. Uh, so it was kind of interesting things for us. We found out the CPU, the uh, kernel version, flash volume, and uh, the fact that it's uh, going to boot uh, to flash. So uh, how did it go? Uh, the board, uh, after boot up, uh, was waiting for a key press. And uh, if it uh, didn't receive a key press uh, on the UART interface, uh, it booted to a normal mode, to the main software, which we call the blue pill mode, uh, where everything is uh, as usual, it's your kind of ordinary world, uh, and it's an ordinary web interface you saw uh, previously. Opposite, uh, if we've interrupted the boot-up process uh, by pressing a key, uh, we dropped into the, some uh, kind of weak work shell. Uh, we called it a, a red pill mode, in which you can definitely stare at the matrix as long as you like, discovering all kinds of things. Uh, so again, about the blue pool mode, it's just a plain web interface. Uh, so uh, just configuration interface for the uh, consumer. Kind of boring. Uh, 
opposite uh, the Redco mode. <laughs> Uh, looked kind of interesting to us. Uh, we found out that it exposed uh, some debug capabilities, uh, even uh, a C interpreter, uh, full-blown uh, file flash, flash file system access, and uh, basic networking support. Uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, one by one, uh, the debug subsystem, it even has uh, good help in here. Uh, so it has all the things you need to debug your mirror uh, looking glass code for VxWorks. It has breakpoints, step, stack trace, disaster, all kinds of things. Uh, more than that, uh, it can uh, even manage some running tasks, quite convenient. Uh, can do memory dumps, memory uh, edits, register manipulation, and uh, it even had a uh, debug symbols compiled into it. So, so it was there for us, lucky. Uh, one of the most interesting things we found uh, is what, uh, that the shell itself, uh, the interactive uh, shell was, uh, in fact, a kind of C interpreter. So you could write a C code uh, and, exec uh, and execute it line by line, by line uh, right in place. So, uh, to test it, we wrote uh, some code uh, to test the functionality. Uh, and now, try to show a demo uh, how it worked for us. Yeah. So here we are connecting to this uh, device, uh, getting uh, the shell prompt, checking the version, and then just copy-pasting our uh, kind of C code, uh, creating the SOC uh, address uh, structure and the memory of the Xbox. We bind it uh, to our IP address in the port. It's okay. Uh, now we open our netcat listener. And then we just issue four comments to connect and write some data in there. Check in back. So here is it. It executed. It says hello, Black Hat USA. So it's kind of working. Kind of nice functionality for a shell to just code in plan C and execute it right away. Uh, continuing. Uh, we also had a uh, full flash file system access right out of the box. Uh, it has all the uh, your usual comments to work with the files and on the file system, list directories, change directories, even recursive listing, which you can see on the right. Uh, you can type your files in binary all the way around. Uh, you can see in the left uh, down corner a fragment of the main configuration file. Uh, you have CFG XML, uh, which stores all the um, critical uh, configuration settings for, the, uh, for this uh, FEMTA cell. Uh, as if it wasn't already enough, uh, these guys uh, also left us some networking capabilities. Uh, so we could uh, transfer uh, files back and forth uh, via FTP and uh, remote shell. So, awesome. Uh, after that, we started looking for what's running actually on this uh, board. Uh, we found uh, at least three interesting tasks, self-explanatory, uh, the telnet, the FTP server, and uh, uh, WDB uh, RPC interface. The last task uh, with the red line you see uh, down, it's a task which actually boots up the main software for the blue pill mode. Uh, if we uh, resume execution of it, it will just uh, go uh, first and resume to the uh, normal uh, function of it. Uh, so, uh, red pill mode again, yeah? Um, these services are really running, running. Uh, net, uh, Nmap uh, is, uh, uh, shows us all of them, uh, but there's a problem. When we issue uh, the resume uh, to um, boot to app process or reboot our uh, device, we cannot uh, see this anymore. So, uh, 
we wanted to do uh, how uh, to work with this uh, kind of forward. Uh, first time, we, uh, first place, we wanted uh, to get rid of all these pesky wires uh, and yard stuff. Uh, we made an assumption uh, that uh, during the boot up, the system actually uh, uh, had this service started before it uh, jumped over the blue pool mode. So we tried to uh, spam it with our uh, simple Python code, uh, trying to connect to the telnet and. Uh, issue some comments uh, to stop the boot into uh, main application. And uh, on the right, you can see the log of this. Uh, actually, it's working, it's right, connect, time out, it's still booting, 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 uh, winding out. Uh, and uh, then you can see the task stopped, and uh, task table, which, uh, after which we just disconnect our uh, script and can connect to the 23 port of uh, Tonus server and uh, throw away all these wires and close the board, work convenience uh, where the, the telnet. Mm, so to continue our research, we needed to get the main, uh, the code of the uh, main uh, software, the, the blue pill code. Uh, actually, there are a lot of ways to do this. Uh, the most obvious uh, by time is uh, just to uh, dump it all with the D comments uh, after the the firmware uh, of the blue pill unpacks uh, and then parse it. But it's kind of not really convenient, slow. Uh, we've also remembered that uh, there was WDBRPC there, uh, which is kind of famous uh, stuff due to uh, also HD Moore research and his uh, Metasploit model, uh, which main uh, capability is dumping the whole memory uh, via this uh, means. So it was uh, the things we tested, and it uh, worked out real well. It gave us really fast binary output, uh, ready, uh, all the right sides, it uh, calculates all itself, and uh, just ready to go uh, for analysis. It would be even more awesome if uh, someone could write uh, an actual debugger uh, using uh, these uh, capabilities we have in uh, Ruby files out there in Metasploit. The, read memory and write memory and so on, but it's somewhere out there. Uh, so this uh, time we came to our Pro, finally. Uh, the best tool so far out for us for uh, complete analysis. Uh, as I've already mentioned, we had uh, pre-compiled debug symbols. We had a symbol table uh, which we needed to correlate with our uh, analyzed code. We did it with a simple Python script, and after which it looks quite uh, quite fancy. Uh, you can see uh, all the symbols. This is kind of a nifty example, uh, one function uh, which relates to how uh, this uh, device handles its licensing. Uh, the licensing actually is a, this long base 64 string. Uh, uh, on the down uh, side, uh, which is mm, which turns out to be encrypted by Ace, uh, and uh, small uh, small mm, uh, of our task uh, was to find out uh, how to decrypt it. Uh, we did it uh, here uh, using uh, IDA Pro. We found out that there is a static part of uh, key, which is fem to add who Abe. Uh, and actually, the rest was just uh, last six uh, bytes, last six characters of uh, so-called APA, uh, the unique ID of uh, the device. After that, it was quite simple. It's a binary blob which stores settings, yes, no, yes, no. For licensing, uh, licensing it's kind of uh, main configurations of main features, such as uh, data bandwidths, uh, Handover capabilities from microcell you know, to the femtocell and so on. Uh, so, kind of analysis. Uh, actually, we wanted uh, to execute our code in a blue pill mode. Yeah, uh, we didn't want to stay all, uh, always uh, in this debug interface, the bootloader. Uh, and again, it was uh, at least two ways to do it. Uh, first is long and boring. Yeah. Download the firmware, extract it, patch, pack, upload back, 
and hopes all goes well without any checksums or hashes and so on. And another, as uh, we thought, was quick and dirty. Uh, it ended up not to be quick, but still fun. Uh, it's uh, just uh, to, uh, we wanted to try to uh, take over control uh, dynamically as it loads. Uh, so um, for this, we needed uh, some kind of some piece of software uh, which could um, be injected uh, upon um, written upon uh, some obviously executed function uh, in the blue pill uh, mode here. Yeah? Uh, actually, we chose uh, the one uh, that handles entering the password for web interface. We've uh, overwritten it uh, with a small uh, awesome snippet uh, that, uh, as you can see, uh, opens a socket, uh, receives uh, some compiled C code on this socket, our case memory for it, uh, copies it there and uh, spawns, correctly spawns a new task out of there. Uh, so um, when somebody wanted to uh, and log into the web interface, uh, it actually spawned the socket. We could dump our code there, it executed, speed uh, everything back. Uh, nice and clean, but it was not quick. Uh, actually, uh, not all femtos cells uh, appear to be created equal. Uh, during uh, analysis of a uh, second batch of these devices, uh, we found out uh, that some of them did not have anything of uh, any one of these interfaces uh, that we've described uh, right now. There wasn't uh, Telnet, no WDB RPC, not even UART. Uh, it was kind of sad for us because we wanted to uh, build up on this uh, cheap little platform to continue in research to give it uh, back to the community to poke on with. And without these interfaces, it was all uh, not worth it. Uh, so we tried to uh, think hard uh, whether everything was lost, and the answer was no. Uh, actually, uh, we uh, took uh, one of our last guesses on this 26-pin connector, and in some time, uh, we found out that there was actually a JTAG connector. Uh, we did it some kind of uh, uh, poor man's uh, way. We didn't have uh, awesome JTAG letter by Joe Grant, <laughs> but we did have our Arduino Duo, uh, which uh, we flashed with JTAG NAM, uh, the open source uh, um, sketch for the Arduino. Uh, then connected all the pins uh, to all these uh, mega pins of the Arduino Duo started uh, brute forcing it, uh, looking for JTAG pins. Uh, unla uh, unlike the JTAG letter, it's quite slow process on the Haruina. And uh, nevertheless, after uh, some hours, we got it. And it was a total win. Actually, uh, we checked all our boards, and all these JTAGs are there. Uh, so this was the vector we need to follow uh, to um, uh, achieve uh, this availability of this platform uh, as a cheap one and interesting to build on. Uh, so we connected another strange way uh, to the JTAG. Uh, we didn't have, again, the uh, right adapter for it. So we used a uh, Raspberry. Uh, here's a uh, map of the pins on Raspberry connected to the JTAG pins on the board. Uh, eventually, with a fresh version of OpenOCD uh, that supports bit banging, you can use your uh, Raspberry Pi as a JTAG adapter. Uh, so, here we go. We try to connect there. We knew this uh, the processor we were looking for uh, from this version information and so on uh, was uh, actually the ARM uh, 926 EJ processor. And uh, here we can see that it's not what we expected. So what's wrong with it? What's wrong with OpenOCD maybe? Uh, turns out, no. Uh, there is another uh, set of pins on the board, uh, actually the uh, jumper pins, uh, with some uh, labels underneath it, uh, two of which uh, said JTAG uh, mode 0 and 1. 
Uh, turns out that switching these jumpers, uh, we could uh, access different uh, uh, OCD interfaces for different devices. Uh, there was three on this, uh, and our uh, processor that we were looking for, the R1, was uh, when we set up the jumper to the JTAC mode one. So, achievement unlocked, yeah? <laughs> JTAC Redneck. Uh, here is the output of OpenOCD, which connected successfully. Uh, and uh, here is your full-blown uh, debugging interface with remote GDB attached to OpenSD interface. Uh, you can dump the registers, modify it, dump memory, modify it, disassemble, whatever, step. Uh, but uh, wait, we really love EDA. Uh, and uh, we thought of the way we could make it more convenient. It was kind of simple uh, from the first look. Uh, it can connect to remote GDB server, uh, but wait, it shows kind of unable kit memory or so, drop GDB connection, bad. Uh, we tried to uh, Google, Google some of these messages and actual internets are full of things. Uh, it was to the rescue um, and uh, we solved this problem with a small patch. Actually people uh, already dealing with this problem only changed two lines of code, uh, some uh, malloc modifications, and we try again, and there it goes. Uh, can't even expect any more of the convenient interface to analyze it on the runtime. It has all of this. All you need is just to uh, dump uh, all this memory. Again, using GTEC, it's uh, more than uh, doable. Uh, then you use the script, the Python script, to correlate uh, your symbol table to the code you are debugging, and you can do whatever. Uh, we are kind of glad to see it, because uh, it uh, restored our faith that uh, with such capabilities we could modify uh, control flow in any way we like uh, to for example, just refresh it with uh, the firmware we liked from our first femta cell. Uh, so, uh, there it goes. Uh, that's the conclusions for uh, my part. The kind of VxVox reverse engineering hardware stuff. Uh, we've uh, messed with some devices, and not only we, during the last time. Uh, and uh, actually, um, Quite uh, a few times we see this uh, real-time uh, OS, the Xbox, and a lot of telecom devices, femto cells, USB modems, smartphones, you name it, especially <laughs> ones manufactured by Huawei, they like it. Uh, there are even some times when you think there is no uh, Xbox, you think there is kind of Linux, you root it, blah, 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 and uh, poking around, you actually understand that underneath it, it's still the Xbox controlling uh, all the radio parts and uh, stuff requiring real-time operation. So, uh, the last time, uh, two of our close uh, friends and colleagues uh, were working to this uh, on similar research about the Xbox and uh, telecom, telecom devices. Uh, there's uh, things to see in this presentation from Hacking Paris they gave. Uh, we think that um, due to increasing uh, deployments of, oh sorry, kind of, kind of work. Blip, blip, blip. Uh, nah. Uh, let me show. Doop, doop, doop. Uh, due to its uh, vast deployments on uh, telco devices, uh, we think Wixbox deserves uh, some uh, more thorough and deep research uh, from the community, from all of you guys. Uh, there are things to be researched and uh, uh, there are things to be found. Uh, please go poke with all your devices. Uh, Eventually, you'll find a Wixbox out there that you can hack. Uh, so, um, this was kind of fun part and so on with stupid pictures. Uh, now, it's uh, kind of hardcore wizardry from Alexei about our actual telecom findings. So, 
please welcome Alexei. Thanks, Alexander. Uh, that was hardware part. Uh, it was about uh, Femtosol in a in a parts. It's about VxFox, but actually, uh, Femtosols work in uh, large networks. Uh, for example, on the on the screen you can see um, Home Node B. It's a Femtosol that is connected via internet with a security gateway, which is connected to the HMS, to the HNB, and so on and so on. There are too many different 3 gpp uh, uh, abbreviations that uh, will blow your mind, but actually you want to hear it. What is uh, Security Gateway? It's uh, ordinary VPN. It protects all the connections of uh, untrusted networks. Uh, if you're connecting via Wi-Fi, via uh, uh, landed channels, uh, this data is untrusted. And because everything inside the core network is trusted uh, data, uh, you don't want to mess with it. Uh, IPsec works in the main mode, so there is no opportunity to get the hash of the password uh, if it was used. And uh, guys from the consortium uh, thought that uh, YEP aka or YEP SIM is a good way to uh, pr protect this connection against uh, malware or evil purposes. What is actually app SIM or APK? It's uh, ordinary GSM authentication. Uh, you send random data to the SIM card and it returns to you 52 or 64 bits of the key that is secured, uh, securely uh, made inside the SIM card. You repeat it three times to get enough key material, and uh, with this key you can connect with the uh, VPN. On the VPN side, there is uh, ordinary uh, HLRs or storages with the uh, keys, and uh, they do the same things. Uh, you encrypt and authenticate every packet, and it's really a secure element. It seems legit, but actually based on GSM authentication. You can take the SIM card out of the Femto cell and replay every data out of it. Uh, so GSM networks are not replay uh, have no replay protection. So the first part to gain control over the Femto cell over the network, we take SIM card out of the terminal, insert it into our SIM reader, and create different pairs of random number and K from the SIM card. And with a piece of software, or with a piece of software and this data, you actually can connect uh, from the cell to yourself and gain control of uh, sensitive information that is passed through, uh, through this channel. There is obvious uh, way to do horrible things to connect elsewhere, not uh, connect Femtocell to you, but we think that would be uh, not that good. Uh, there is a open server, a well-known open server, Strong Swan, uh, that has uh, different flavors of EAP. And uh, one of these uh, uh, variants is APSM file. Uh, you create this data, you create triplets of uh, encrypted data, and uh, substitute it into strong swan. And actually, uh, there is a configuration for uh, such a thing. You can connect uh, most of the uh, femto cells that are based on IP uh, SIM uh, to yourself. But actually, it's a uh, small text. Uh, the presentation will be uh, made public later, so you can just download it and take this configuration. Inside the tunnel, the things are getting interesting. It's a new field of attack because it's a new interface that is kind of protected. Uh, you have new IP address uh, with new open ports. Uh, as uh, Alexander already said, there was only HTTPS port or from outside. From the inside, there is different kind of ports. For example, 7547, it's uh, TR069. Uh, there is CTP, there is HNBAP over CTP, there is RUA, there is RUNAP, there is DTAP, there is different kind of things. 
Uh, but to manage all these interfaces, you need management server. Uh, server. Uh, it's called Home Node B Management Server. Uh, its protocol is TR, and uh, there are two different parts of it. Uh, it's initial HMS, uh, HMS uh, that uh, provides basic authentication of the fem uh, of the fem to cell by the API. Uh, and uh, serving HMS that protects uh, femtocell from moving from one place to another by geolocating, uh, provi provides configuration of radio part. For example, uh, it provides information about uh, channels, it provides information about scrambling codes, and so on. And uh, this HMS server provides access to HMB gateway. It says, uh, okay, I've configured you, so connect to the other server. Uh, what are configuration options? There are over 9,000 of them. You can uh, sniff neighbor base stations. You can enable debug interfaces. You can get information about users who are connected to this vendor cell. You can gain, gain information about cryptographic keys. You can reconfigure IPsec and so on and so forth. But uh, there is also not much of interest because we uh, want to create our own network. So we provided IP address of HMB gateway. It's a home B gateway. And it's actually just a gateway. Uh, Fantasel connects to it with the SCTP protocol. And uh, special header says uh, uh, where in the core network you should send your data. And HMB gateway only sends it uh, elsewhere because uh, Fantasel is already configured and uh, there is nothing to be done. And when a Fantasel connected to this HMB gateway, from its point of view, it's uh, already in core network. Okay, we connected to uh, Fantasel to us. We have uh, different packets uh, that uh, have uh, nice dissectors in Wireshark. Okay, we can receive all packets, accept all requests, and hope everything will be fine. But actually, you can't accept all the requests uh, just like that. There is a SCTP protocol, which is uh, the base uh, for the, all the connections from the femtocell to the core network. Uh, it has kernel model in Linux, Linux uh, since a very long time. It has user line bindings to access SCTP uh, uh, with the, your software. It's widely used in telecoms, but uh, long story short, uh, every two or three minutes, it breaks uh, with no good reason. Maybe it was Fantasel, maybe it was my hands, I don't know. After SCTP, there is a ChinBAP. It's a protocol that is used for gateway and is pretty simple. It issues requests to register itself in the core network and you can just accept it. And when the user connects to you, you can accept it as well. After that, uh, our femto cell uh, come to the blue mode without any connection to original telecom software, telecom hardware or software, and was ready to accept users to it. Well, that was an achievement, uh, but that, that was not easy. Uh, there is uh, different domains inside the telecom network. It's a CS domain. It's a, um, <laughs> it's for uh, voice and uh, SMSs. And PS domain, it's uh, for internet. When, uh, femto cell, uh, when you connect with the phone to your femto cell, it issues location update request, and if you try just to accept it, it will fail. I was very sad about it, and I didn't know what to do. Uh, I don't know the specification. It's about five DVD disks, just with PDFs, with different versions, with different information, uh, with the documents uh, linking to the other documents, the, these documents uh, linking uh, other ways, and so on. There is a pl pl plenty to read. But uh, actually there are a number of documents that are really useful for uh, creating your network. It's uh, TS24008. It's uh, basic core network protocols. It describes um, pretty much everything uh, about how to connect, how to manage the connection, uh, and uh, how to authenticate. 
and also it provides information uh, about mutual authentication in 3G networks. Uh, there are different buzzwords in uh, news. Uh, and they say, oh, Trigi networks are protected from the 2G attacks against uh, uh, evil base stations. So IMC catchers are really impossible. But we found some different things uh, that are manageable inside the uh, no normal behavior of the femtocell. Uh, for example, we can issue identity requests. Uh, it uh, provides you with information about IMCI, IMEI, and so on. Uh, this information actually is uh, uh, that information that you used to uh, fo follow someone over uh, the air. And uh, IMSI identifies SIM card of the subscriber, IMI identifies mobile station of the subscriber. Uh, uh, so we can uh, create our IMC catcher that won't uh, terminate uh, calls uh, onto it, but can provide you information about where the person is and what he is doing. So, uh, and the user can be identified by both the SIM card and by its, his mobile phone. So if you take out your SIM card from your phone, but and use the other one, uh, telecom network can uh, also follow you. And when they say they, that they can't uh, find the stolen mobile phones, don't trust them. Uh, there is a nice packet uh, uh, GMM information. It provides you information about uh, the network you're connecting, for, for example, in the roaming. You can uh, issue its phone name. Uh, you can change time zone, for example, if you travel uh, far enough. And uh, different local time. Well, there were uh, interesting uh, talk uh, on the Black Hat Europe uh, last year about uh, bypassing HSTS uh, protection in uh, web browsers. Uh, it was based on uh, man the middling uh, NTP connections, uh, so the clocks are running faster and uh, HSTS uh, header is blocked. But there are different restrictions. For example, the main one is the so all the data is client issued. Uh, so you can't just send any information to, uh, to a regulatory client. In the UMTS, you have uh, nicer things. You can just send uh, any data in the future, in the past, and uh, phone will take it uh, without hesitation. Uh, and the most interesting part about UMTS, the, it's not really integrity. Uh, there are different opportunities to bypass integrity checks. It's the, those checks that uh, uh, mutual authenticate mobile phone and base station. Uh, according to spe uh, specification, it's impossible. But uh, with the bad code and uh, better opportunities to uh, use it, you can do different things. For example, under certain conditions, you can uh, send every two SMSs uh, without authentication uh, on your femtocell or base station. And, uh, for example, you can bypass uh, EMT's integrity checks. Uh, I will show the demo with these uh, three vectors. We have our red pill uh, femtocell and our phone. We issue commands to bring it to life, and and it switches to blue. Sorry, this is annotated one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have our Fentocell, this is currently disabled, and we're enabling it. We're disabling a plane mode uh, from our uh, phone, and it is connecting to a different cell uh, nearby. It's actually our cell that has a name, original name. We issue special comments to change this name and change the data on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> A 
as you can see, we changed the date, uh, the year of the phone, and uh, actually we broke our WhatsApp application on the phone, and we sent the SMS to our phone that is bypassed integrity check because we don't have any information about uh, keys that are stored in our SIM card. We just bypassed it. Uh, what are implications of Ebert SMSs? You can just spoof it, spoof the sender, but it's kind of dull. You can denial of service uh, uh, subscribers that are connecting to your phone to sell. For example, on the right hand side of the screen, you can see uh, multiple SMSs that are sent uh, in, uh, in one minute. But the most interesting part is binary SMSs. Uh, binary SMSs uh, can be used to give, give the key from the uh, SIM card. There were research for, by Kastenol, by Alexander Zaitsev, with his co-speaker, Sergei Gardejic. And uh, you can uh, conduct all those attacks that, are, that were described uh, with the power of the card reader by the air over 3G. So if you disable 2G in your phone, you are still not protected. And you can update files on your SIM card. Uh, I will return to it a bit later. Uh, what are authentication and integrity control in the GSM and 3G? In GSM, you have KC, uh, just a ciphering key for its algorithms. And as a proof of authentication, it's uh, just four bytes of data that is sent back to a base station, and that's it. Uh, the phone doesn't authorize uh, uh, SIM card, uh, the phone doesn't authorize base station. In the UMTS, there is uh, different opportunities. For example, uh, there are two keys. It's a ciphering key that is used to, for confidelity, confidelity and integrity key based, uh, for integrity. And as for proof of authentication, both for client and the base station, they both should know this key, and each packet should be signed by it. And actually, the rest is redundant. Uh, but uh, there is a standard that it's maybe not well known. Uh, there are four opportunities to connect in for different cells. For example, if your uh, SIM card doesn't provide, uh, does provide uh, GSM EKE authentication, it can, it can authenticate in UMTS by it. And uh, as for GSM, uh, GSM EKE in GSM networks, it was... Uh, uh, Completely broken, there are different rainbow tables for creating money in the middle attacks, uh, for uh, different denial of service attacks. Other two, two, two of modes are generally better. They are using uh, uh, pr uh, protection against reply attacks. So you can, can't just uh, take one, one information from the SIM card, you uh, should possess it for a longer time. Uh, but there is an opportunity for GSM, uh, GSM for UMTS. Yes, it uses uh, GSM authentication. Uh, we send only uh, one ran random data to the SIM card. It receives 64-bit uh, uh, key, and but we actually should obtain uh, integrity key and ciphering key. And uh, they come up with an idea. Why would you just, just concatenate it and XOR it in the, some way? So we uh, decreasing brute forcing uh, resistance to 64 bits, and actually uh, there is an opportunity to create uh, rainbow tables for UMTS authentication and uh, to break it uh, in the matter of seconds or maybe in a matter of minutes. And uh, there's an actual uh, quote from the, the standard uh, where they concatenating uh, keys for ciphering key and XORing keys for integrity key. That's simple. Uh, what are possible attack vectors? Uh, if you want to connect someone to a 3G network, you can use uh, Kraken to obtain KC uh, for a given rent. This information is sufficient to connect any uh, subscriber to the fm to cell uh, you can uh, use binary SMSs to obtain 
uh, such information from the working cells uh, uh, over the air and uh, without the proximity to the, uh, to the, to the victim. Or you just, guess, uh, just use a smart card. Um, maybe for those who will understand, uh, this uh, screen shows that um, all data that's sent to a uh, SIM card is just one uh, authentication command, and actually it's a 3G connection. Uh, what are getaways? Uh, in a couple of days, we are going to issue a toolkit uh, for um, this Huawei femtocells cells that creates your own uh, UMTS in the box. Uh, you can have uh, functional security gateway, so you can have uh, management server, you can have HNB gateway, and it's actually sufficient to connect uh, some or maybe all of your SIM cards to the femto cell and receive SMSs from it. Uh, the, it's a research ongoing, so uh, from time to time the, uh, this code will be updated and there will be different opportunities. For example, for now we are going to create uh, uh, voice uh, over the 3G and uh, create our own uh, 3G network. Uh, we have a uh, reverse friendly femto cell uh, that is uh, actually can be bought uh, right now from the different Chinese uh, marketplaces. And uh, the knowledge, as we can humbly uh, think about, that is not everything that good with the 2G networks uh, because. Uh, there are different opportunities to do things wrong and different opportunities to do things right. And uh, actually it's a kind of thing like Cosmocom BB that you can use uh, by yourself to investigate these all opportunities. As for future plans, uh, we are going to provide uh, deep firmware analysis including uh, analysis of uh, the digital signal processor. Uh, there are different opportunities for mobile phone fuzzing because ASN1 is the friendly interface because there are different opportunities to send arbitrary amount of data inside this uh, protocol. And we're going to have fun. Uh, we are uh, thankful for our friends and colleagues and different guys from the internet who helped us in our research. For example, uh, Kirill Nesterov or Benoit Michaud, uh, who have awesome library for different 3G stuff. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs>